I hear music in the air. It must be amateur radio field day once more. My name is Jonathan Charles. My call is NB3I, and I would like this video to be a summary of our preparation, setup, and operations for our field day as K4NN. For me, field day starts with rigging the trailer. It's something that I built back in the early 90s with a friend, Mike Burkholder, who makes trailers. He made this trailer with slots in the floor so I could put these frames to haul either six canoes or, in this case, support a ladder to swing a, an antenna up in the air for amateur radio for field day. After the rigging is mounted, I can fill in the trailer with all the other things we need to set up our temporary antennas. Here we are at our site uh, in Virginia. Uh, we start by stringing the wire antennas. We use this uh, spud gun to throw a slug with a fishing line over the trees and then we use uh, the fishing line to pull the rope back over the tree. And then we can pull up the wire antennas. We do this over and over again as, it, uh, as we put a lot of dipoles up in the air. These wooden uh, uh, stands are just the greatest thing. They're so simple and so inexpensive. We can put a pole up in the air in a very short time uh, with these stands and it's not very expensive. Uh, this stand is uh, those uh, telescoping aluminum tubing that uh, DX Engineering sells oh, and Texas Towers. Uh, they're just perfect uh, for raising a wire into the air with a center insulator for uh, the dipole. It, uh, it, uh, all we need to do is guy it once it's up in the air because they do wave in the wind. This is a 44-foot uh, mast that made from the booms of four, or beams that we used to use. For 10, 15, and 20, we used this K4 KIO uh, hex beam, just perfect for field day. They go, they're so light and so easy to erect. And then uh, for the other two stations, we use these uh, uh, fiberglass poles. The first one is uh, 28 foot and the other one is 38 foot. The first one we used uh, these wires for a linked dipole for 10, 15, 20, and 40 meters. We're on, we're ready, and we we're going. we could just push this uh, antenna up in the air with no trees. So we could uh, keep it in line with the other dipoles by holding it in place with little rope guides. Uh, it goes up really easy. We can change the antennas by adding and subtracting length on the wire dipole. And it works out very well. Once it's guided, it waves around in the wind, of course. Rolling, we're rolling. Guided. And we use this uh, one for an end fed antenna. Uh, this one's 38 feet in the air. It's important to have these fiberglass poles because this particular end fed uses a vertical radiator. And using electric conduit pipe, we made these lightweight steel towers. This time we'll use it to erect this two element 20 meter beam. It needs to be rotated a little For $40, bit more. you can get four pipes, weld nuts on the pipe to allow the bolts to tighten up on the telescoping section. And you have a 30 foot tower. They're lightweight but they do bend easily, so everyone needs to work together carefully as we lift it into the air. Sometimes uh, we're not successful uh, and they do bend, but today we made out very well. After the stakes are in, it's pretty secure and we can feel confident that the antenna will be up, stay up in the air. Uh, if, it, if the wind blows. Now it's time to put the hex beam on the ladder tower that's mounted on the trailer. This hex beam is probably the lightest beam I ever installed uh, on this ladder. 
tower and it just worked perfectly uh, putting it up probably we got it up about 30 36 feet in the air I guess we could have gotten it up a little higher but uh, with 36 feet is probably sufficient this is a top section of a Roan 25 uh, tower with a rotor for 62 and 440 wasn't a lot of activity on 440, but we put it up there anyhow. But now it's time to break for lunch. We can't take too long because it's just two hours till contest time and we still didn't set up our stations. We're grateful to Joan who brought us lunch to celebrate this event. Joan's uh, late husband started this club called Signal Hill Amateur Radio Club with the call K4NN. So now we have a group of people who are friends of her husband's to get together to activate this call for field day. Solar energy is new for us this year. Nathan, N3QKA, works for Enphase as a field engineer. They manufacture micro-inverters for the solar energy in industry. These three panels are capable of 600 watts, so during the day they power the transmitters and charge the batteries, and then as the sun goes down, uh, the batteries kick in. The batteries held for us most of the night, but early morning we had to use a little generator for a couple hours till uh, the sun came up again. Let me introduce our group to you. Here is Jim, WS6X, running CW from a little makeshift desk in the back of the car. And here is Dan. Dan's call is NM3A, and he operated from the screened-in porch uh, running sideband. Dale and 3 B and A with Heather K I P Y R and Matt K G four D P S worked at the V H F station. Kilo Kilo for Papa Hotel. Then here is Nathan and 3 Q K A using the digital equipment with Lowell K K four P H looking over the shoulder of Ahmed who ran our go to station. Kilo Kilo for Papa Hotel. Then there's yours truly uh, running CW here from the back of the car. You can see we're all using Elecraft radios here on HF. Often field day folks are tempted to use their backup radios for field day. But we've had so many experiences where operators would get into each other's radio, which ruins the experience for everyone. Field day is the time to use the best radios capable of rejecting strong interfering signals from other transmitters close by. So we found by spreading our antennas out several hundred feet from each other use and using the K3s, we were isolated from each other really well. Here in these drone shots, you can see how our antennas were spread out. We had a uh, thousand feet from uh, from one end where there was an NFED antenna to the other end where we're, our delta loop was in, uh, strung up in the tree. You can see here the delta loop that uh, just a 40 foot pole on top of a 24 foot uh, ladder so we had the apex up there about 60 feet in the air for that delta loop. We just couldn't have had nicer weather for this field day this year, sitting on top of this ridge between Virginia and West Virginia at 3,900 feet. 
uh, it's just a really beautiful spot for us to operate this year. Hopefully this video provides some ideas for your own field day, which are simple and inexpensive to create, but at the same time they're very effective field day antennas. This year propagation was uh, particularly di difficult, especially on Saturday, with the radical waves of signals fading in and out. We are happy this Q QSB problem did improve for us as the weekend progressed. So while our scores were not so high, we are satisfied considering the conditions that, th that we had this year was uh, at such a low point in our sunspot cycle. So uh, thanks for watching this video, 73s, which means best regards from all of us.